I was never particularly careerist anyway. I was after this, you know, wild-hearted, romantic, art, creative uh, adventure, you know. I'm a lucky guy. This is one of the themes of my lucky life because I coincided, I intersected with important directors in some of their most important movies. Death Wish. <laughs> Gets hurt, mother. Just hold still. Don't move. What do you want? Don't jar it, mother. You know what we want. It was the first audition that I'd ever had for a movie. They just gave me the sides, you know, the the the, the scene, and uh, so they said just improvise with a couple other guys. There was a fifth, fifty other horrible-looking, mean guys, kind of pumping themselves up into a state of, uh, you know, hysteria and uh, malevolence, and, and uh, I went in. And, you know, did what I could to it. There were no uh, women there, victims, but we pretended to be, you know, not, not nice. And, uh, you know, they, they, they liked me for it, I guess. Michael Winner, he was known to be an abusive uh, director. And, in fact, the first thing he did to me, the very first shot, first movie coming up the stairs, I was skulking up to Hope uh, Lang's and uh, Charles Bronson's apartment on the Upper East Side. He screamed at me. For the camera rehearsal, he screamed in his British accent, Goldblum, start acting now! Something like that. My God in heaven. But you know what? I came to think it's a darn good direction. Now we've got me in New York, and my agent says, hey, Woody Allen uh, would like to meet you for this movie he's doing. I just went and met him. I had some stupid sort of onesie, <laughs> a kind of workman's uh, polyester khaki kind of uniform on. I don't know why that I took to in those days. And I said, hello, nice to meet you. And he said, that's all I, I need. I said, really? I could, do you want me to do anything for you? And no, 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 that's all I need. Okay, thank you, so nice to meet you. Yeah, she's great looking, great. Little Ted on the androgynous side, but it's dangerous. Yeah, I, I forgot my mantra. And that was it. Of course, they just used the line, but people seem to have uh, remembered that line, you know. That's silly. That's ridiculous. Look. Now there's more. Uh, look at your face. Something happened when you went through, Seth. You've got to get some help. I think you must be sick. You You're jealous! David Cronenberg is a very smart guy. And the script was uh, smart and beautifully uh, written. I remembered reading it and going... Uh, something like that. Eureka, Eureka, in some way. And then I went in, I think I talked to Mr. David Cronenberg, and we, I passionately uh, offered my, my, um, you know, why I liked it so much. I was never particularly careerist anyway. I was, uh, after this, you know, wild-hearted, romantic, art, creative uh, adventure, you know. And in that vein, it was a landmark for me and a learning experience and very nourishing. We shot it in Toronto in the middle of winter, and so I would sometimes during that movie get up at uh, two in the three in the morning, go and sit in my dentist's chair while Chris Wallace and Stefan Dupuy would put on the final stage of five hours of makeup. Uh, they won an Oscar for it, but in any case, I, I loved doing that movie. I was very passionate about it. It's, it's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. You did. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. Mr. Steven Spielberg, I loved, you know. I got a call about, oh, you could, you're gonna meet, uh, Steven Spielberg wants to meet you on this. Read the book first, read that Michael Crichton book. Ian Malcolm, wow. Smart, funny, interesting character. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but, uh, well, there it is. He was so nice, he said, oh, you know, I've enjoyed you, I said, me, you, and da, da, da. And he said, you know, there's a sort of movement afoot with our little committee here as we're rewriting another version of the script to have that part removed from the script. So since we've had this meeting, there's this little wrinkle that may make this, render this moot. I kind of said, well, gee, I, you know, I felt like I had to advocate. I, anyway, I felt moved to advocate for my inclusion. I said, well, 
what, what do I know, you know, about s storytelling compared to you? But I tell you, I think that he said, yeah, we want to get, there's a, the people want to make that character sort of included into the, melded into the uh, uh, Sam Neill character. I don't think Sam Neill was doing it yet, but the Alan Grant character. I said, no, 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 I think keep that character, but I, I don't know, whatever I said. Anyway, it turned out that I got to be in it, and, um, and that's the way it uh, goes. Thousands of them, millions of them, what the hell are they doing? Looks like they're preparing an invasion. Independence Day, yes, uh, Roland Emmerich, I think is the right pronunciation, or Roland Emmerich, you, you may say, uh, is a wonderful fellow and a, uh, a lovely director, and I enjoyed working on that. Judd Hirsch, of course, is my dada in the first one, chess playing dada. I save the world. Remember what I say when I'm looking at the thing? I go, I, I think this countdown means something else that nobody else means. Uh-oh, 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. I say, time's up, says I. Ah, that means not a million. What the hell are they doing? In Portugal, the Presidente gave a special ball. Don't be nice to Ali. He's my nemesis. Wes Anderson, well, you know, once again, well, what a lucky thing. He's a genius. Now I've done these three movies. Here's the first, here's what happened. Now, lo, these 13 years ago, you know, I got called and said, yeah, you want a general meeting? of some kind, as they call it in the show business, uh, meaning there's no specific project, really, with Wes Anderson. Says I, uh, do I ever? And he arranged, as he always does, some adventuresome, stylish, unforgettable, although I forget what the name of it was, <laughs> restaurant in New York, where you order interesting things. You know, he's a connoisseur of life and places, environments, and, um, locations and food and all sorts of things. And he's just a wonderful fella, not, not only a genius. Hey, Stephen, how's everything going with your, uh, what do you call him, a leopard fish? Jaguar shark. Jaguar shark, exactly. I love it. Tell me something, does it actually exist? You know, Allie, I don't want to give away the ending. He said, well, come, I'm doing this movie about a fish and a guy whose friend got eaten by a fish and he wants to find the fish and there may be a part in there and uh, I'll call you in a couple of months, as he did. And we had a table reading uh, with Bill Murray and some other people who didn't wind up in the movie, some other wonderful actor or actors. I was there, so it was kind of an audition, I guess, but we read through the whole script and um, I guess I did okay. He called me up and said, yeah, come on, do it with it. We're going to, you know, Rome and... Uh, and I know Gore Vidal, and we're going to use his villa in the south of Italy, which we did, and Angelica Houston is your wife in it, and da ba 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 Jeez, it was just so wonderful to do that. Uh, he, like Robert Altman, makes the shooting of the movie a kind of an art piece experience in itself. So after doing that, Grand Budapest Hotel, in a similar vein, in a wonderland, winter wonderland, Gerlitz, Germany, with all this people who you know in the cast. We took over this little hotel and had the best time there and made a movie that, uh, you know, importantly, that's what, when people say, what do you look for in a director? You know, besides having a wonderful experience and a lot of things, um, you want the movie to turn out um, swell. And boy, uh, it, those movies did, his, his movies do. Is he any kind of a fighter? <laughs> you take this thing out of my neck and I'll show you. Oh, listen to that. He's thre threatening me. Hey, Sparkles, here's the deal. If you want to get back to Ass uh, Place, Asberg. As God! I did, you know, the Grand Master with the great Taika Waititi and improvised all of that, a lot of that movie, and had a wonderful time doing that. And now with Isle of Dogs. I only recorded a couple hours. Wes called me to be part of a little recording session with Bill Murray and Bob Alaban and Ed Norton. Uh, I couldn't do it scheduling-wise, so I had to be all by myself in Los Angeles as Wes was on the phone. And, um, but it was nice to, just with him, you know, because he's a wonderful actor's director, and to hear him go, yeah, yeah, do that line, maybe do, do, do it a little like this, you know, he's just got great taste and subtle and naturalistic. And anyway, we, I laugh and he makes me laugh when we do it, I'm kind of, get his infectious joy of 
making things, you know, when I'm uh, doing it. Anyway, I studied with this uh, wonderful, uh, well-known acting teacher, Sandy Meisner, who said it takes 20 years to even call yourself an actor after you've worked for 20 years. Uh, and then a lifelong study where you keep getting better. You know, I took that to heart and I'm a kind of a late bloomer, so I stay interested and I think I'm on the threshold of my better stuff. I, I look for variety and things that may nourish my advancement and excitement and just kind of what moves my innards, you know. And, you know, recently I'm getting my wish more than ever.